Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about JavaScript arrays. Now arrays are one of the most used what we call data types or data structures within JavaScript and any other language. So they're extremely important that you understand how they work. So I'm just going to start and explain what is an array. Well essentially an array is an ordered collection of elements. So what that means is previously when we created a variable, so let's say we had like var tim equals five. Well, this variable Tim stored simply one element. Now what we're going to be doing is having a variable storing multiple elements. And I'm going to discuss how we can access those different elements, add elements, remove elements, and do all kinds of things like that. Now, the way that we create an array, there's actually two ways in JavaScript. But we're going to stick with this way is simply just by putting square brackets like this. So when you have a variable, you name it something, you put your equal sign, and then you put square brackets and this denotes I have created an array. Currently, our array has a size of zero as there's nothing in it. But then what we can do once we've defined these square brackets is go ahead and put some elements inside of our array if we would like to. So, for example, I could put an element. Hello, I could put the element five. I could put the element four point six. I could put Tim. And this is my list of elements inside my array. So if you're familiar with other programming languages, sometimes these are called lists as well. It's pretty much the same thing in JavaScript. This is just called an array. And what we can do when we create an array is simply put elements inside of these square brackets, separate them by commas. And now we are saying here we have four elements inside of our, our array. And now I'm going to talk about how we can actually access these elements and remove them and do all kinds of things like that. Now I will note here that there is another way to create an array. So typically what you do is, you know, so you'd say var array, and then you just do this if you want to create an empty array, but you also can do new array. So this is a way that you can create an array in JavaScript as well. Usually we stay away from this as it's not necessary and it just makes things a little bit more messy, but I will show you how this works. What you can do is actually say new array inside these brackets, you can denote a single number that tells you how many elements you want to be in your array. So in this case, we'll do 50. And what this will do is actually create for us an array of 50 blank elements that don't have any content. So it's an array of size 50. That's what this will do. If you leave it like this, then it just automatically creates one with size of zero, which means it's going to look like that. Now, hopefully I didn't confuse you there. If I did just ignore that line, I just wanted to show you guys in case you were interested. Now let's talk about accessing elements. So Right now I have four elements in my array. We have an array of length four. How do I access these different elements? Well, this is where we talk about something called indexes. So I'm just going to type console.log here so I can start printing some stuff out. So essentially, whenever we have an array, every element in the array has a specified index. Now that index is simply an integer that represents its position in the array. Now the indexes for any array go from zero to the size of the array minus one. Now that simply means here that index zero represents hello as that is the first element index one represents five as that is the second element two 4.6 as that is the third element and three as Tim as that is the fourth element. So the easy way to remember it is essentially the last element here is always going to be the size of the array minus one index and the first element will always be zero. So let me show you how we actually index things. So what I can do is simply put the name of my array, which is Tim square brackets to the right of it and the index inside of here. And this will actually access this specific element in the array for me. So watch, I'm just going to go to my uh, terminal here, whatever this is, and print this out. And you can see that we print hello as obviously zero was the first element there. Now, if I do index two, we should get 4.6. So let's bring this up again refresh, we get 4.6. Awesome. Now what happens if I do something like Tim four? Well, we know that four is non index because we only have indexes from zero to three. So if I try to do this, let's observe what happens in the console here, we get undefined. So when you try to access an element that does not exist, you get an undefined. So that's something worth noting um, that actually doesn't throw an error for you where in other languages, it usually would, it just gives you undefined. Okay, so now that we know how to index, how can we actually change elements in our array? So what I'm going to start by doing is just logging the array here. And what I'm going to do now is change one of the elements or add an element to our array. So what I'm actually going to do is say Tim two equals and we'll just say a new element like that. So what does this do? Well, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, so the element at index two I want to set that equal to new element. So it's going to change 4.6 to be new element. And now if we refresh here and we have a look at our array before and after, we can see, I'll just expand this here. 
we get hello five for Tim and then we get hello five new element Tim. So that did indeed change it. Okay, so there's a few more things of arrays that I want to talk about. But we are almost finished. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the length property of an array. So essentially, if you would like to check how long an array is, what you can do is simply call this dot length at the end of the array name. And that will tell you how many elements are in the array. So here, we can see we get four. Now notice this isn't telling us three as the last index It's telling us just the count of how many different elements we have. And if we had a blank array, and we did this, we would have a size or a length of zero. Okay, so let's go back. Now the next one that I want to show you is to remove an element from the end of the array. So let's say that we want to remove Tim or we want to remove whatever element is at the end. A very easy way to do this is to do Tim dot pop. Now what pop does is simply remove and return the last element. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. Essentially, what I can do is I'll console.log Tim.pop and then I will simply console.log Tim and I'll show you what the result is from this. You can see we get Tim here and then we get the list except or sorry, the array, but we are missing Tim at the end. So what this pop actually does is remove and returns the last element to inside of this log statement where we print it out. And then obviously now Tim does no longer have this last element. So we will print out the three elements here. Now the other one that we can use is called push. Now what push does and this doesn't return anything. So I'll actually we'll just type it out here is add an element to the end of the array. So rather than removing one, it adds it. So to push something to the end of the array, we could do let's push a new element like that. Let's console log and have a look at this. And we can see now we have five elements in our array and we get new element at the end. So that is what push does. Now I think there's a few more methods we'll go through quickly. There's another one called shift. Now what shift does is simply remove the first element from the array. So let's look at this one. So if I do shift, you can see we remove hello and we have five, 4.6 and Tim. Now I'm just gonna have a look, but I think that is pretty much it. Um, I'll show you one more. This one is simply to sort the array and it is sort like that. So Tim dot sort. So what I can do is refresh this and now we can see that we'll actually sort the numbers first and then we will sort the strings. Now, if you want to learn more about how this sort method works with different objects, you can look that up on your own time, but essentially it's going to sort, you know, your strings alphabetically, your numbers by size, and that is pretty much all there is to it. So I think with that, that is pretty much arrays. I'll show you one last thing, just in case anyone's curious. If you do decide to do something like Tim seven equals five, uh, actually let's just do eight and notice that I don't have an index seven in this array. What will happen is it will fill all the indexes up to seven with empty elements and then fill index seven with eight. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So you guys get an idea. So you can see here we have hello five, four point six Tim. So Tim was index three here. This is index seven. So we have three empty indexes before that, just so that we can actually add this at the correct index. So just be aware if you do decide to do something like this, if it's an index that's out of the range of this array, so it's not in the length of the array, then what you're going to end up getting is a bunch of empty spaces before this element that you add in. So anyways, that has been it for arrays. As always, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in another one.